Hello everybody, welcome back to part 7 of barycentric coordinates. Today we're going to be looking at the area formula and some of its um, corollaries. So the proof of the area formula actually takes barycentric coordinates which are already three-dimensional and or at least um, they're, the, they're represented by three coordinates and actually places it into three dimensions. And the reason being is that uh, if you step back from sort of the geometry that we've been doing, we notice that x plus y plus z equals 1 is the equation of a plane in three dimensions. And we're dealing with two-dimensional geometry which happens in a two-dimensional plane. So everything we've been doing, everything we've been doing happens in this plane. So let's consider some, and, and we have we have a, b, and c, which are points represented by one zero 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 one one uh, zero and zero zero one. So let's consider some point outside of the plane of ABC. So let me see if I can try um, drawing sort of the, the plane of ABC. It goes out in that direction and goes out in that direction and goes out in that direction. So sort of this plane spanned by um, uh, or just the plane that a B, C and a, B, and C are on, and we consider some point O that's not on the plane, and let's call it 0, 0, 0. And so this point has some distance to uh, the plane, which we will call H, if I can write an H with the yeah. Um, so we sort of have this is perpendicular to the plane, and um, actually I might redraw this picture. So here's uh, here's O, and we consider sort of these three vectors being A. Um, B and C, then we know that from standard 3D geometry, we have three vectors, then we have a parallelopiped, which um, Sort of like so that it's sort of just like a slanted cube. It's like uh, you know, square is to parallel pipe as cube is to uh, sorry, square is to p parallelogram as cube is to parallel parallel pipe ed. Um, and we know that for these for three vectors, um, the volume that there that of this parallel piped that that it spans and and compared to another parallel piped so let's say we have three points p q and r on the plane of abc and we draw in another parallel piped then the volume of what I'll call P of PQR. This is the the volume of the parallel piped divided by the volume of the parallel piped of ABC by definition is equal to the determinant of a matrix um 
using the coordinates of P, Q, and R. So let's say P is X1, Y1, Z1, and Q is X2, Y2, Z2, and R is X3, Y3, Z3. Then by definition, this determinant is equal to the ratio of these volumes, these parallel pipettes. And by careful analysis, we can see that every parallel pipette is equal, or is sort of, the volume is equal to 6 times the volume of the tetrahedron formed by the origin and the three points. So this is equal to the area of O, P, Q, R divided by the area of O, A, B, C. And we know that a tetrahedron, the volume of a tetrahedron is one-third times its base area times its height. And like likewise, we noted that um, the origin has some fixed distance to the plane, which is the height. And this is invariant of the um, of what points we pick, because any points we pick are going to be on the same plane, so the height of the tetrahedron never changes. And so, if we were to replace both, and the bases, the bases of the tetrahedron, if we're considering the base to be the face that's on our plane, then the base is the triangles ABC and PQR. So we have factors of one-third that are the same, and we have factors equal to H that are the same. So this ratio is equal to PQR divided by ABC. And this is the area formula. And this is actually how we get the equation of a line um, that we learned about in pr a pretty early on episode. It's actually a corollary of the area formula. Um, but there's more corollaries to this. So if three points are collinear, then their the triangle they form is degenerate, so the triangle has an area of zero. So if we have points P, Q, and R that are collinear, then this matrix of X1, Y1, Z1, dot, 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 has to equal zero because PQR is equal to zero. Okay, that's a pretty easy corollary. And in fact, this collinear co collinearity criteria needs not be in um, what do you call it? Normalized coordinates. These don't have to be normalized coordinates because. Uh, and this is a property of matrices in general, or determinants, that if you have sort of each of these is multiplied by some k, you can factor out a constant k from a single row or column. So we'd have k times this der uh, determinant. And so we can do that for each um, sort of normalization constant, so let's say they were all i, j, and k, then we would have all our coordinates would be in, would be normalized and it would still equal zero. So, 
it doesn't matter if the coordinates in here are normalized or not. Similarly, if we have two points that don't necessarily have to be uh, normalized, then x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2, x, y, z, this is the equation of a line. And um, if you were to compute this determinant, you would just get, you can, or, and, and zero is equal to. So if you were to compute this, then you can just say that ux plus vw, or yeah, vy plus wz equals zero. So instead of having all these x1s, y1s, and such, um, you just replace them with general constants. And so that's how we get the equation of a line, is that we have this determinant, and we have that these three points are all on a line. Um, but this is this determinant is more more useful if we have sort of two points and we want to create an equation of the line that passes through them. And um, another collinearity criteria is, and this one holds only for normalized coordinates, but we can get rid of the z coordinates um, what's it right in? So, if we take this determinant and it's equal to zero, then the three points x, y, x1, y1, z1, or let's just say p, q, and r, all line a line because, um, but it has to be normalized coordinates. And that is another property of determinants that you can take, let's say, an entire column and add it to another column. So if we take the first two columns and we add it to the third, then each entry in the third column becomes an x and a y and a z added together. So if these are normalized points, then we have um, that this is equal, that, that we just have um, ones in the last column. So this is particularly nice if, you know, if you have some really weird expressions for z um, or it just, you know in general it just makes computations easier but it only works if you have normalized coordinates um, so I think that's it for this video so we have areas and lines um, but yeah just always make sure that uh, whenever you're dealing with things that you're using um, Normalize coordinates when you need to, and non-normalized uh, non coordinates only when you can use them. Um, so, area must be normalized. Collinearity, depending on the formula you're using, doesn't have to be normalized. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.